hands are lifted up My heart is ready to receive A blessing from you A blessing from you Well, come on and just give yourselves a hand for being in the house on tonight. Come on and give your hands. Come on and give a blessing to the fragrance of this house, Lady Sabrina, on tonight. And let's give honor to our Bishop Briggs on tonight. Give honor to our Bishop on tonight. Hallelujah, God. And y'all pray for him as he comes and bring the word on today as we are still, we are in part two of spiritual warfare. And I don't know about you, but I'm still high off of Sunday, so I'm in great expectation on what shall come forth on tonight. Uh, but before we get there, I just want to go over a few preliminaries that we have. Um, just a note, please check your church center app. All of our announcements, all of the happenings here at The Truth, you can find on our church center app. If you are not connected, make sure you visit our information center right after service to get connected. Um, North Charleston, D.C., Father's Day Drive, we are raising money to provide T-shirt socks, boxers to men at the North Carolina Detention Center. Um, so please notate that if you are going to, and Bishop will probably talk about that a little more later on, but we want everyone to be a part of this. So please notate on your giving envelope if you are going to just be a blessing to this drive, so please indicate that on your envelope. Amen. Also, Bishop Briggs is all about his assignment, and for those who are, um, God has connected to this ministry, it is his responsibility to make sure that they are connected to God. And there are three ways that the people are connected to God. One is through Christ Jesus, and that is always opening up, that is always opening up an opportunity for the lost to give their lives to Christ. Amen? Number two is through water baptism. Therefore, on June 30th, immediately at the service, we will have a water baptism here at the truth. And it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a member or not a member, we want you to be a part, and Bishop is extending an invitation for you to be a part of our water baptism and for you to get baptized, amen? And you, number three is church membership. The scripture says, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And that, with that being said, we want to invite every new member, even if you are an old member that want to know about our mission, vision, or learn more, we are inviting you on June 16th, immediately after service, um, to be a part of our new members orientation. We want everybody to know what our mission is, what our mi vision is, where we're going, and what's going to be happening here at The Truth. So on June 16th, immediately after service, please sign, uh, please be there for our new members orientation. We are only a few weeks away from the glory on that girl. <laughs> Woo. Women's Conference, and ladies, we are excited. Dr. Stephanie Jennings will be with us on Friday night for our worship service. Um, our Regina is that going to be our event host, so we are excited. We know that she's going to bring the fire. We know that Dr. Jennings is going to be the fi bring the fire as well. And on that Saturday at 11 o'clock is our women's brunch at yep, 11 o'clock that will be held in the Impact Hall. And I'm excited to say that we really only have a few tickets left, y'all. So if you have not purchased your ticket to the brunch, I'm going to ask you, I plead with you, plead with you to get it tonight, because we probably only have about 10 tickets left. So I think nine, because I think, uh, did you get your ticket in the back? She didn't get it yet. So we still have 10, so if she don't get hers, she just won't have a seat. So Leanna, go on and get your ticket. <laughs> but we want you all to be there, so please, if you have not done so, please meet us in the lobby off to our right, and someone will be there uh, for you tonight to get you signed up for our women's brunch. And we want everybody to be here Friday night. We're open. We have open seating. So we want all the ladies to be here on Friday night. On July the 29th and August the 2nd is our vacation Bible school. So parents, please sign your children up. If they K through sixth grade, register them today on our church center 
app. And also on next Wednesday, our Student Connect is family night. Yeah. Family night. We're going to have games, food, fun. So please, everyone, come out, bring your families. We just want to have a really, really good time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. And at this time, if you all can stand on your feet as I bring to the altar our bishop, our leader, our visionary, Bishop Jonathan Briggs. Hallelujah. Well, while you're standing, let's give the Lord a great shout of praise one more time. Come on, you can do better than that. God bless you all. You may be seated. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you all, but I think that uh, uh, Ms. Sandra did a great job on the announcement, so I don't really have much to say. But I am ready to get into the Word of God, and it's going to be another awesome evening. I don't know about you all, but I'm kind of like Miss Sandra. Sunday, I'm still basking uh, from what God did on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> we were in a meeting um, Monday evening, and um, Miss Z said something. We, we missed the, uh, somehow or another, something, some technicality happened with our video recording, and Miss Z said, if the devil tried anything, he got us on that one. And uh, but that's okay. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so we'll be able to package it from a audio perspective, and um, you'll be able to have that in your library. I challenge every person, I think we'll be able to create an MP3 or something where you'll be able to uh, download it somehow or another. We'll have it all together in the next week or so. But I challenge every one of you to invest in yourself. Now, there will be, there will be a particular charge for this. The only reason that I'm going to have some charge, rather, rather it's a dollar or three dollars, I don't know. Whatever you invest in, you will have an appreciation for. Sometimes if we don't watch it, we get caught up in wanting everything to be given to us and we miss out on the part where we should invest in us. Amen? Amen. So this evening I'm on the second part of uh, the uh, lesson of pleading the blood and the spiritual warfare weapon and my assignment tonight is going to be to complete this what the Lord has put in my heart. I wanted to teach you how to uh, cover yourself from the demonic attacks of the devil. The Bible says that um, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Now, if you were not here Sunday, I don't know how to explain it, but we can see that the devil is at work. Let me say this, and I trust that you all who are here in the auditorium will respect what I'm about to say. And then those of you who are watching us from around the globe, not only myself, but several other people that I spoke to on Sunday after service, uh, they agreed that the enemy is on an all out attack against the mind of young women. So because we know that, we know how to deal with that. Sometimes you need to know your opponent so you'll know how to do battle against your opponent. And so uh, tonight I'm going to help you, show you how to be aware of the opponent, that old devil, that serpent, teach you how. And I got to tell you something, um, don't fear, don't get caught up in, don't, you have nothing to be fearful of. Listen to me closely. The devil cannot touch you all. Amen. Hear what I'm saying. The only thing the devil can do is he can create situations, which I call mirages, to make you hurt yourself. He himself cannot hurt you. He does not have that authority. We are children of the Most High God. And 
as a result of that, we have a right to the protection of God, and I'll teach you how to warfare, and we'll watch God do his part. Amen? Are y'all ready to go? Look at somebody and say, loosen up, because we're going to beat him at his game. Say it again. Say, loosen up. We're going to beat him at his game. Now, the number one game that we're going to defeat the enemy in is you're going to learn how he has been using you. That's a good place to give God praise. Most people don't want to accept that. We always talk about how he has attacked us. But you're going to learn how he has been using you. And I can feel resistance right now, but I curse that off of you. He has been using you. You just didn't know it was orchestrated by him. And as a result of that, you didn't know you thought it was you. You thought it was your personality. You thought it was how you believe when the truth of the matter is he entered into your heart and he twisted how you thought on things and you thought you was right and all the time you was all wrong. So loosen up. <laughs> Y'all ought to start laughing. Tell, let's see, that's, that's victory right there. How many of you can testify he has been using you? Why don't you wave your hand at me? Amen. Yeah, just testify. He's been using you. Yeah, he's been using you. Your anger, you're not an evil person. So why think it? You're not an angry person. So why be it? Maybe he's been using you. So tonight we're going to have us some fun. I'm excited about what God is doing and how God is, is doing it. I, I trust that you will open your hearts. And by the end of the night, I'm going to teach you. We talk about the power of the blood. I'm going to teach you what the power of the blood really is. The Bible says, for although we live in the natural realm, we do not wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aim. He's been using you. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. The Bible says that uh, we used to use, if you go back, the Bible said we used to use human weapons using manipulation to achieve. The highest level of witchcraft is manipulation, intimidation, domination, and inconsideration. These are the highest levels of witchcraft. In other words, any time you see this in operation, the devil is behind it. He is using God's people. Now, because you are a child of the Most High God, you cannot be possessed of the devil. So all he can do is orchestrate and make suggestions that you might follow. All he can do is make suggestions. When the devil deceived Eve in the garden, he did not make her do anything. He made a bunch of suggestions. And then after he had departed from her, she went back and considered. And as a result of that, she uh, did what she was told not to do. So on last Sunday, we talked about uh, why it's important for you and I to understand pleading the blood. We said that salvation comes to us by way of his name, but protection comes to us by way of his blood. 
Take me over to Hosea 4 and 6 in the New Living Translation. It's important that you and I understand this. So instead of us saying, I thank God I'm saved and quit, we should say, I thank God I'm saved and I thank God for the blood. Because salvation alone just don't help you. It's that blood that protects you. And the blood is forever working. Now in Hosea 4 and 6, look at what he says. My people are being. In other words, it's an ongoing thing. When you see I-N-G in scripture, it is not past tense. It's ongoing. My people are being destroyed because they do not know me. That's why it's vitally important that you become a part of a church where the word of God is being taught. I get excited about praise and worship, and I get excited about exhortation, but I get excited about being taught because whatever I learn, I can repeat at will. And a lesson unlearned will be a lesson always repeated. So the Bible says, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priest refuse to know me, it would be funny if I decided that I did not want to get to know God. He says, you priest, being that uh, you refuse to know me, I'm going to refuse to recognize you as who you are. He says, since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I'm going to forget to bless your children. So a lot of our children are going through and they are under an attack, not because we've done something so wrong in sin. Quit putting this on our kids. Go back and see if you have made a decision to deal with God. See, you can't blame your children when you want to reject God. Amen. Let's go back and read it in the King James Version since they don't want to get it right now. Because see, see, if, if, if you want to be free of the works of darkness, you got to let somebody diagnose your situation. Look at what it says. He says, my people are destroyed for what now? Lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected what? Knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shall be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of God, I'm going to forget your children. Amen. See, this whole peace that the devil, this whole peace that the devil has, um, uh, this whole peace that the devil is using right now. Y'all got to get this right here. We're doing all this talking, and the truth of the matter is, He's working overtime to affect the children by distracting the parents. Hello? When you, you, think, you think COVID was all about you trying to preserve life through health, when COVID was a diabolical attack to destroy the minds of God's people because if, 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 if they can get, if the devil can get you to reject God and God's word, he know he has the next generation. Watch this. You done live halfway through life. It's your kids got to come up. So you sit and let him use you thinking you're good, but then you don't understand what you're doing to that next generation. So our position in God is giving the devil the approval to do what he wants to do with our children. He has been using you. It is amazing. It is amazing when I talk to people how everything in the world can prohibit them from being where God wants them to be. But there's nothing can stop them from going to work. It is amazing. It is amazing how I'm watching, I'm listening to people. I'm, you know, I, I've gone back into one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling because I wanted to understand. And I'm watching people come and sit with me in my office and sit with me at dinner and at breakfast and at lunch. And I'm looking in their eyes and I'm saying, you cannot see what the devil is doing to you. And they are so, watch this now, embodied 
in him and his thoughts till they believe it's true. And they cannot, they can't find no scripture to validate it. Well, wait a minute. If it's not in the Bible, it can't be God. And if it's not God, it ain't nobody else but the devil. So that's what I want to deal with. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to learn his ways and we're going to know how to use our spiritual weapons for warfare. And that is what y'all going to do. Look at somebody say, I'm going to plead the blood. Now, I know the devil is plotting something because you can see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm getting happy right now. I can, I can, you can see him right now. You look, you, you look at yourself in the mirror. Look at how you've been carrying on. Look at how you've been acting. And you can tell that there ain't nothing but the devil right there. <laughs> so you got you to gotta begin to learn how to use warfare. And uh, watch this here. What? <laughs> and plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Instead of cussing each other out, Come on, tell him, no, no, I plead the blood over your life in Jesus' name. Come on, don't go and cuss the dog, the cat, the rat, the spouse, the children. Don't do that no more. Just plead the blood. Some of you are feeling uncomfortable right now. <laughs> boy, I'm, I'm, I'm just now about five minutes in. If, boy, if you keep going like this, I won't be all night. But I'm going to take every bit of my time because I want to get you some information. So we see this. Now watch this. One of the things that we see, I, I'm seeing in the, in the realm of the spirit, and I'm watching it play out in the lives of people that's heading our way. It's uh, what God showed me was how the devil is using brothers and sisters. And you can take me over to, uh, take me over to uh, Revelation, um, Revelation 9, Revelation 8, 9, somewhere up in there how the devil is using people to come against God's people. Yeah. Wee. He's using God's people to come against God's people. Look at what it says. Take me over to Revelations 12 and 8. I'm, I apologize. That ain't nothing but the devil. The blood of Jesus. <laughs> Look at what it says. And prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. The devil got kicked out. The great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and the strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ for the, here it is right there, for the accuser of the brethren. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. For the accuser of the brethren. Now, he didn't say the accuser of the people. So he's talking, when he says, when you hear brethren, if you give me that in the New Living Translation, when you hear brethren, he's talking about family. You, when, when you hear in the Bible, and you, the, you read the scripture and it says, beloved, He's talking about the people he loves. When he says, my brethren, he's talking about the children of God, the family of God, because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. In the New Living Translation, he says, then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last, salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to the earth. The one who accuses them before God day and night. So what we are finding now is you, you see it on social media and you think that's the right thing to do. You, you are watching people look at the fall of a man or a woman of God and they say God's given them the assignment to talk about it. That's the devil. That is the devil. It's amazing you won't tell your business but you will talk about somebody else's business. That is the devil, and some of you are being used. You can't wait to get on the phone and hold a conversation and talk about, did you hear about what happened to so-and-so? 
No, I did not hear. And you proceed to tell it. That's the. The devil comes after five groups of people. He comes after the world. He comes after God's angels. He comes after the church, the family of God. He comes after Israel. And he's been coming after Jesus ever since. Now, I wish I had time to explain all that to you. Just understand the enemy has a plan and you are in it. Just, just get that. The enemy has a plan and you are in it. We talked about what the power of God. We talked about pleading the blood, what that means. We said on Sunday that pleading the blood of Jesus is uh, when we're praying, we're asking God for protection. We're asking God to put up this, how many of you say, say this blood barrier. I, w I went back and looked at the blood barrier in uh, Exodus 14. I'm going to take you over there in a second. The Bible says in Isaiah 59, you don't have to go to the scripture. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. So what he does is raises up a blood barrier. So when you apply, when you plead the blood of Jesus, there's a blood. Matter of fact, take me over there to Exodus 14. Let's look at how the Bible said it. Moses at the Red Sea. Y'all understand the story. I cannot wait. Now, the blood was working all the time. Somebody said the blood was working all the time. Now, the blood started, started in Egypt, and it followed them throughout Egypt. Most people don't understand that. I, I, was, I was reading on the blood, and I, I, I saw in the book of, uh, I saw in the book of, uh, 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 Levit I believe it was Leviticus, where he was talking about when a man wants to be cleansed, you take the blood and you sprinkle it on the horns, and then the priest, watch this right here, would sprinkle the blood seven times, and that would cleanse a man. Then I reference it over to when the prophet told Naaman to go dip in the Jordan seven times. Y'all wish I had some help up in here. So the blood's been working throughout the Bible. You and I just didn't know how to work it in our day to day. And that's why we have not seen what the blood really does. What we do is shout about the blood when we're supposed to be pleading the blood. The Bible says, watch this now, the children of Israel left Egypt. They, Pharaoh put them out. We're going to talk about it. The angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel, watch this now. The Bible says the angel who had been leading the people of Israel, at one time he was in the front of the army. The Bible says, watch this here, he moved to the rear. Lord, I wish I had some help. <laughs> I feel like preaching now. He moved to the rear and the pillar of the cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. Next verse. The scripture says, the cloud settled between the Egyptian and the Israelites' camp as darkness fell, the cloud turned into fire. In other words, he said, I want y'all to get your rest. Because the Holy Ghost got your back. Y'all didn't get that part right there. The Holy Ghost was leading them. And then when the army of e the Egyptian army came to attack them, watch this, the Bible says, the Holy Ghost moves to the rear. That's the fire of God and became a wall so that they could get their rest because the next day they had to go through the Red Sea. The Bible says, so they turned into a fire lightening up the night, but the Egyptians and the Israelites, come on now, did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. And the wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Next verse. So the people of Israel walked, watch this now, walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. They walked through the Red Sea because they had a blood barrier. I wish I had some help up in here. That blood barrier kept the sharks and the scorpions and the eels and the, any kind of sea creatures that could have swallowed them up. 
that blood barrier kept that from the side. When I plead the blood of Jesus, I'm asking God to create me a blood barrier. I understand how David could say it now. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I fear no evil because I got me a blood barrier. I wish I had some help up in here. Y'all ain't praying with me today. I need some help. Where my amen corner at tonight? I, I understand more and more. When I understand the blood, I understand how David didn't worry about walking anywhere because he understood that there was a barrier that was prohibiting. I wish I had some help up in here. That was prohibiting any and everything that could have destroyed God's people. Can't just touch me. Blood barrier. He said, when we pray, we pray, God, raise up a blood barrier. See, the devil can't touch the blood barrier. Yeah, that's why you have to plead the blood. When we plead the blood of Jesus over our families, there's a blood barrier. You can't see it. Y'all can't see it, but you just got to know by faith it's there. Now, some of y'all are sitting here trying to go back to how you read it and all of that. Let me tell you something. How you read it, if it didn't stop you from going through what you went through, I'd start listening to me. I would dismantle what I know. See, see, we know so much, but what we know don't work. Let that go. I let what I know that don't work, I let that go. Hallelujah. I ain't gonna tear up everything. No, no, we we tear, we destroy more stuff than the devil do because we holding on to stuff that don't work for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we, when we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, we're asking God for this blood barrier. Yeah. Now, I, I'm about to be a little dangerous right now, but it's going to help you out. Uh, see, see, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, y'all. Yeah. I do plead the blood. Plead the blood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I plead the blood for anything. That is not like God to be prohibited from touching me. I'm going to say that again. I plead the blood whereby anything, I don't care who it comes from. It can come from my mother. If it's not the will of God for me, it'll never touch me. See, sometimes we be selective on how we want the blood to Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. Ah, See, your husband or your wife can't make you crazy if you've already applied the blood. Your children can't make you weary if you've already applied the blood. Anything. Tell me I'm worried about my kids. You hadn't applied the blood. See, I applied them. <laughs> I plead the blood of Jesus over my life so whatever they decide, it ain't going to destroy me. It won't uh, touch me because I have a blood barrier. I don't understand why folk can't get along. I, I, do, I don't, but I do. I do because, see, they're trying to get along on their own strength. See, I don't try to folk on my own strength. God, I plead the blood. Oh, glory to God. Amen. I go in restaurants pleading the blood. Didn't he say, if you take up anything deadly, it shall not hurt you? You don't know what they're putting in your food. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. I start pleading the blood, and if they had a thought to do something stupid, God raises up a standard right there. Y'all live too freestyle. I live secure. Look at somebody say, I plead the blood. I plead it over my life, my family's life. I plead it over this church family's life in Jesus' name. <laughs> I plead it over my assets. I never leave home without declaring it over my assets. I plead it over the airplane. I'm flying in the car. I'm riding in the car. I'm driving. You better hear me. I plead the blood. Pleading the blood. I'm almost finished. Pleading the blood. When I plead the blood, I'm declaring to God, God, 
I need your protection. So I'm pleading to a higher authority. Watch this. When I plead the blood, I'm praying to my God. I'm not pleading to my faith. See, yeah, we, we all live by faith, but there's times we have to summon a higher authority. <laughs> hey, God, you know what I'm about to do. You know what I'm about to do. And so, God, this is what I need you to do because this is beyond my pay grade. See, the Bible says in Romans 12, we shouldn't think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. See, there are times that I'm supposed to pray for people that's above my pay grade. So I plead the blood over their lives because I need the higher authority to go ahead and work. I'm not trying to prove that my prayer life can move mountains. What I want God to do is go ahead and heal them people. I'm going on about my business. See, some of you so spiritual and deep, you trying to show people I got it. I don't have it all. He has it all, y'all. I just trust in him. I plead the blood. Hey, Father, in Jesus' name, they just gave me word that brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so are going through. I plead the blood of Jesus from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. In other words, God, this beyond my faith right now. I need you, God. How many of you know sometimes things happen beyond your faith? Okay, y'all want me to say, explain it to me, Pastor. Man, church getting, man, my time. Let me explain that to you. Explain that. That simply means anybody in here work on a job from eight to five or nine, eight hours. Come on, wave at me if you will. Okay. See, see, you on your job all day, right or wrong. And then as soon as you get off, you get a bad, you get a message that somebody that you love is going through. You ain't as strong spiritually as you want to assume you are. You forgot you've been working all day on them people's job. Oh, I wish I'm going to go over here because somebody over here. See, you're not as strong as you assume yourself to be. You've been working all day dealing with all kind of personalities and dealing with all kind of spirits. Man, you're not as strong as you assume yourself to be. So at some time, you don't have the faith to be able to walk them through it. So all you can do is plead the I plead the blood on this one, God. Because I don't have the strength right now, Father God. No, I don't feel like talking about it right now. I wish I had some help up in here. Don't feel like dealing with it, God. The last thing I want to do is come home and get one more negative report. God, I plead the blood. I'm calling on a authority that's much higher than I am. Don't want to deal with that, God. There's some battles out there I don't want to fight. Don't feel like fighting. Don't have the energy to fight. You talking to the man of faith, but I don't have the energy to fight it. That's why I call on a higher authority. Today I'm pleading the blood. Yeah, you, you want me to say a lot of stuff, but I ain't got much to say, but I plead the blood. When I plead the blood, I'm declaring that I can't protect myself, God. I'm pleading the blood. I'm calling on this higher authority for protection and Benefits. In other words, when I, <laughs> when I plead the blood, I'm crying out to God that he raise up this blood barrier for any ungodly attacks. See, it don't take long, it just takes faith. See, many of you don't know how to warfare. You got to be honest with yourself. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. That's why when the enemy attacks your body, there are times people have been so severely sick, they couldn't pray for themselves. So they need somebody else to not always pray for them, like how y'all real deep spiritual Christians are. You want to run in and make yourself like you the great white hope, black hope, ugly hope, spiritual hope, whatever you want to call it. And really all you got to do is declare the word of God. I'm like how... I'm like how the centurion soldier told Jesus, you don't really have to come to my house. Could you just send the word? I wish I had, I wish I had some help up in here. You don't really have to come to my house. Could you just send the word? Hey, glory to God. See, we got to become, we got to know how to work this thing. Sometimes you ain't got time to stop and, and go see what the problem is. 
Hey, God, I just send a word over there. The blood covers them. And whatever's not like you, Father, you line it up with you. Because that ain't nothing but the devil. Blood. I plead the blood. I plead it over my children for protection. I plead it over my life and my children for deliverance. I plead it over my life, my children's life, my church family's life for protection for deliverance, for a new start. And uh, my faith is God, one day they'll tell the testimony. Now you're going to see it in a minute how important a testimony is. God wants to make a statement in the earth and he wants to use us. The church has lost its savior. When I saw them 60 plus kids come to this altar on Sunday, Sabrina got home and looked at me and said, your marketing, our marketing plan didn't draw them. I said, say that again? She said, wasn't in marketing all them kids come up to that church on Sunday. She said they needed it. God sent them there. See, God touched people's hearts. Yeah, yeah, God wants to make a statement. It's about time for you and I to start moving in warfare that folk bust these church doors down trying to get in. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. People need to bust these church doors down trying to get in. Let me tell you something. Can I prophesy right now real quick? Say prophesy, pastor. There's going to come a day a usher going to get ran over because people ain't got time to wait on them. I wish I had some help up in here. There's going to come a time where parking attendants, they, the best they can do is at the front door because they mess around and get hit further out in that parking lot because people are going to be trying to get to where they know their answer is. I wish I had some help up in here. There's going to come a day where praise and worship, you won't even hear them because the people in the auditorium going to be singing louder than them because they're after something because they know God's about to make a statement. Don't you think you're secure in your title or in your role? Blood, the blood. The blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the Bible talks about it. When a, when a man knows his God, he'll do exploits. Let's talk about the blood, the power of the blood. Now, when we deal with the power of the blood, there always, when God begins to move, I sense God is this elevation. I, I sense the elevation in the atmosphere, and, and, and that's why you have to be very mindful of how you operate. On Sunday, I'm going to talk about how to honor the voice of whom God has given to lead you. you. You all have to learn how to be able to hear this man of God. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't let the devil use you to attack the very thing that's covering you. Have you ever bought your kids some clothes and they took went to school and took the scissors and cut them? Boy, that thing messed your heart up. You want to tell them children I'm behind up. You know why? Because you worked hard to get. No man or woman of God want to stand up and then who he covered, they cut the covering. But that's the devil. That's how the devil works. That's why it's so easy for me to understand it. Because I know when the devil is working through a person, using a person. So there's got to be um, this 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 instructions that's given. So, but before I get to the instructions, I want to talk about the uh, power of the blood. Number one, the blood cleanses. Number two, the blood purifies. Number three, the blood protects. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Number four, the blood speaks. The blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf, y'all. I wish I have some help up. <laughs> Number five, the blood identifies. Number six, the blood exterminates. And number seven, watch this, the blood pays the price. Did y'all want me to give y'all that again? Number one, the blood cleanses us. Can you take me to 1 John 1 and 7? The blood always, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. So when I plead the blood, many times I'm not only talking about protection, but I want the blood to do its masterwork. 
a man of God came to see me the other day, and he said, um, he said, uh, I, I, I just want to come through. I'm leaving Florida. I had to go to Georgia. I'm on my way to Myrtle Beach, but I need to see you. I said, well, if you catch me between between 12 and 1, I'll sit with you, but you're going to have to catch me at that time because I'm steady at work. And so while sitting there, he says, I'm a little frustrated, uh, apostle. That's what he called me. He said, I know you're a bishop, but I'm summoned in the apostolic of you now. He said, I'm a little frustrated. I don't know why I'm being handled by people the way I'm being handled, and I don't understand it. And the Holy Ghost began to tell me about how he don't, people don't understand because we are carriers of God. When we show up, we show up with the fullness of God. Okay, let's go down here. I'm coming back up. So if we're going to have a healing service, even though I will be talking about healing, that don't mean prosperity still ain't in me. I've just decided to be intentional about the healing part. I wish I had some help up in here. Even though we're having a healing service, it doesn't mean deliverance is not in me. I wish I had some help. So when I come, I don't come with just one commodity. I come with the fullness of the Godhead, fully complete. So whatever God wants to do, now somebody may walk in and does not need healing. They just need some peace. So God will allow me to distribute a piece of peace, even though we're in the healing service. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Okay, let me help you again. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the natural. Because you are a loving, kind, hearted, generous person, when you invite people to dinner, watch this here, you just don't provide food. You provide in kindness. You're providing love. All of that's wrapped up in the invitation, even though you use dinner as a drawing card. I wish I had help up in here. See, Sunday morning fellowship ain't about just preaching. It's about everything that's embodied in God, embodied in man. He said, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So if the greater one dwells in me, that means I don't come empty-handed. And to the degree how you value it will determine what you get. So you can sit and get some good information. Or you can get healed if you want to. Or the anointing of prosperity can hit you if you want to. All of it's going to happen because it's all in one person at that moment. The Bible says the blood cleanses us. 1 John 1 and 7 says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And when we learn the fellowship and the what now? Blood of Jesus Christ, his son does what now? See, the reason why you can't stop sinning is because you want fellowship. Yeah, see, what you want to do is sweat out. You got so much going on. You don't, you kind of anti-social. You don't let the world label you as an introvert, and God said you better fellowship. The reason why you don't want to fellowship because you think people see you. Oh, yeah. And many times, sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. I just love me and my kids, and me and my husband, or me and my wife. No, you better get you some more fellowship so you can cut that stuff out. The blood purifies. Take me over to Hebrews 9 and 13. It says, under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a young cow could cleanse the people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Watch this now. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify your conscience. See, I don't understand low self-esteem, but I do understand it. You're going to go through it until you know how to mess with your own mind, till you know how to heal yourself by pleading the blood over your mind. See, you'll go through all kind of mental issues until you stop one day and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind so I understand that my mind is the battlefield of the devil and I'm not going to let the devil have my mind tossed by all winds of doctrine. The blood of Jesus covers my mind. Look at what it says. Hey, look at what it said. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify. It didn't say just cleanse, which it means cleansing. 
but it'll wash away all kind of contaminated thoughts. Right. Woo you worrying about how folks see you. You be you better apply, look at somebody said a blood. You need to put it on your head too. <laughs> he said the blood will purify our conscience from sinful deeds so that we can worship the oh Lord, I wish I had some help. You can't you can't have fun with God. Because your mind too jacked. It says, watch this now. For by the, it says, you, uh, you, you use the blood of Christ to purify your conscience from sinful deeds so you can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Listen, y'all, listen. The blood is our protection. Okay. Say, go there, Bishop. Okay, in the beginning of time, y'all remember when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden? Say yeah, even if you don't. <laughs> the Bible says when they ate from that forbidden tree, the Bible says they got some fig leaves and covered themselves. Ooh, watch this. They covered themselves with fig leaves. Hello, how old? I hear you, old ghost. Oh boy, it's about to get a little graphic up in here. Yeah, they covered themselves because they knew they were naked. You all thinking they knew they were naked, naked with no clothes on. They knew they were unprotected. What was unprotected? Y'all want to know now? Say, tell me, Bishop. Their reproductive system. So God comes along and say, who told y'all y'all was unprotected? Right. You all are in the garden. How you gonna be in a protected place? Right. How you gonna be in a protected place but believe you're unprotected? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I wish I had some help up in here. How are you gonna be in a protected place but feel you unprotected? How you gonna sit in this church? We build people of impact, y'all. If you don't know about not pastor love everybody, that's the devil. That's a demon spirit messing with your mind. You riding talking about you feel in love. Let me tell you something. That's a demon spirit, and I'm going to cast it out of you tonight before you leave this place. Let me tell you something. I, I don't have to touch you. I'll cast it out. And, and if, you, you, if you got to fall and, and hit your head on something and then come to your senses, they ain't going to have them. But we'll get it out of you. Amen. How can you be in a protected place but feel unprotected? So the Bible says they wrap fig leaves around themselves. But God says that's a natural thing. Fig leaves can't, no natural thing can protect you. So when God begins to deal with them, God now creates a sacrifice. He kills an animal. Lord, I wish I had this. Oh, y'all will get it in a minute. Y'all will get it in a minute. He kills an animal because if there is not a oh, shedding of blood, that cannot be a redemption for anybody. So he kills an animal so blood would be shed and he wraps them in the animal skin now they protect it. Not by the skin, but by the blood. So watch what the devil is doing. So it's okay for a woman to walk around half naked because the world has infiltrated her mind. She's thinking she's sexy, but the devil's saying she unprotected. She wondering why she can't get no man, cause no man want what everybody done saw. Hey, 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 hey! Come on, no man don't want what everybody saw. No man don't want what everybody had. I wish I had some help up in here. Equal opportunist, brother. No woman want what you'll show everybody else. But you think you, I don't know what you call it. But really you're unprotected. So you wonder why your life is jacked up. Because you're unprotected. Now you are a good candidate for the devil to work through. Let's go back. Let's go back to that scripture one more time because I got to work it out. 
Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our conscience from sinful deeds. Purify this thing that caused us to do those things. See, our conscious sinful deeds won't happen if we can get our conscious clean. <laughs> Boy, I got him now, Holy Ghost. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, until you get your conscious clean, yeah, your actions will be different. See, 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 most people don't have a standing because their conscience is off. Yeah, you don't. You don't. <laughs> Wee! I was out of town not too long ago and I was in a restaurant and uh, I done seen the price of the menu and I walk in there the host said well just sit where you want to shoot I walked out because I got to stand it by myself you don't talk to me like that and I'm spending money you sound like a fool hello hello oh see some of y'all can't handle that I, I, my conscience been purified oh no 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 if them people at the Waffle House have my coffee ready when they see me get out my car, oh, for sure, you're going to have my coffee ready. Oh, I, I know where you just think you all at. That's y'all. I have a standard. My mind, see, I used to think less of myself. I used to have low self-esteem where I would just whatever, however, but those days are over. Oh, you better help me. I had my mind purified. I read that I was a royal priesthood. Oh, I wish I had. I read that I was God's son, fearfully and wonderfully made. I read, <laughs> I read that he cast all of my sins in the sea of forgetfulness, and they can never arise to haunt me. I wish I had some help. I got a whole nother idea about me now because I had my conscience purified. The blood protects us. Exodus 12 and 23. Go there real quick. The blood, the blood. Look at what it says in Exodus 12 and 23. I'm, I'm talking about just the power of the blood. Man, it, it does something to your mind when you stand in your house and you pray and and you, you declare, you just tell God, God in the name, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. Every thought that's contrary to your word, it cannot penetrate nor haunt me. Destroy, derail the plan for me, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, shekata ba ba ba. That thought of fear, I declare no weapon formed against. Oh, shekata ba. Woo! That, that thought of shame, God, you said you'll never allow me to be made ashamed of. I wish I had some help. Any praying people in the house? Somebody got to plead the blood. Look at what it said. Come on. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptian. But when he see the blood on the top and the sides of the door frame, the Lord's going to pass over your home. He will not permit the death angel, his death. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He will not permit his death angel. See, everybody ain't covered, y'all. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. I ain't going to even go there. That's a whole nother class. Genesis 4 and 10. The blood speaks on my behalf. Cain killed Abel. Y'all getting this in? Wave at me if this is making sense to you. Cain killed Abel. And uh, Cain... Cain rose up on God, y'all. Cain, Cain rose up on God. I just don't understand people. Cain rose up on God. Look at what happened. So God comes to Cain and says, he said, what hast thou done? Watch this here. The voice of that brother's blood crieth out unto me from the ground. Can I tell you what that looks like? Let me tell you what that looks like. God had already pronounced, God had already pronounced 
what would happen to man because of the fall with Adam and Eve. But he still had them covered. Remember, he wrapped them in the skin of an animal. So they still was under the blood covenant, yeah. even though they messed up. God really wasn't paying attention to Cain and Abel because they're good. They're under the blood covenant until the blood of Abel cried out to God. So I said, well, God, what do you mean by that? So I went and studied what that word crieth mean. And the word crieth mean that God got a summons be on jury duty. The blood of Abel summons God to go deal with Cain. See, when you, when you are covered under the blood and folk do you wrong, that blood summons God to go handle them on your behalf. That's why God says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord because the battle is not yours. It's mine because you already pleaded the blood. So when you plead the blood of Jesus, it speaks on your behalf. God says, don't worry about that. God says, don't worry about it. Don't touch that. God says, I will deal with that. You're, when you plead the blood, it summons me to go handle that situation. Lord, help me, Jesus. Woo the blood cleanses, purifies, protects speaks on your behalf, identifies, Isaiah 43 and 23, the blood exterminates. Isaiah 43, 23, come on. Look at what it says. You have not brought me sheep or goats or burnt offerings. You have not honored me with sacrifices, though I have not burdened and wearied you with requests for grain offering of frankincense. You have not brought me fragrance, calamus, or pleased me with the fat from sacrifices. Instead, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your faults. I, yes I, even though you didn't bring an offering, all you brought me was your sins. He said, I, even I, alone, will blot out your sins. Watch this now, not for your sake. He said, I'm going to do it for my own sake because I don't want to ever think about it again. Or you, God says, your sins so severe. God, <laughs> God says what I want to do. Lord, help me, Jesus. Woo, glory to his name, his precious name. God says, what I want to do yes, is all the sins you bring me. He says, what I want to do is I want to take the blood and I want to pour it on what's been documented about your life. He says, I'm going to pour the blood on it and all of the writing that was written against you. Lord, I wish I had some help. Everything they said about you and it, whether it was true or false, he said, I don't want it to come to me no more so I'm just going to pour the blood on it and exterminate it Amen. blood yes, he said I come on get me to my scripture yes I alone will exterminate obliviate I will blot out your sins not for your sake God says not for your sake Lord, I wish I had some help up in here. See, don't be telling me about this unforgiveness in your heart because God just showed us God don't hold things in his heart. God says, not for your sake, but for my sake because I don't want to have to think about it no more. So whatever you have done wrong, the blood exterminates it because I don't want to have to see it come up again. I wish I had some help up in here. Now I understand. 
when Peter asked Jesus, how many times shall I forgive my brother? He says, seven times? He says, no, seven times 70 in one day. He said, if you repent, I cleanse you. If you do it again, it's like the first time because I don't want it back up again. You let the devil use you to remind you. Last year you did it. Last week you did it. But what about the times I repented? In God's eyes, it was the first time. You can't go nowhere in life. You're scratching for ground. You can't get ahead because you're holding on to stuff that you should have done like God says. Since I don't want to see this again, the blood of Jesus against this right here. Yeah. Could you give me that same scripture in the new in the King James Version? My whole shit that in there. Some of you holding, see you letting the devil use you. You can't forget what somebody who you swear you love did to you last year. God said, I don't even want to see. See, for my own sake, I ain't gonna keep dealing with you on that. Or oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. I need somebody to help me on this right. For my own sake, I'm not going to talk about your past. Because I don't want to have to keep that in my spirit, man. I don't want to have to keep that in my mind. I wish I had some help up in here. See, 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 the unconditional love of God deal with your own sake. See, it ain't for your sake. It's for my sake. I got too much vision to be trying to pack your problems. I wish I had some help. I got too much vision to be keep talking about what you did. I got too much grace. I got too much vision to be thinking about how you treated me. I ain't got time for that. For my own sake, the blood of Jesus. For my own sake, I got too much vision. I got too much, God, God's doing too much through me. God's working too much through me to try to figure out if you care about me or not. The blood of Jesus. God is doing too much through me to try to determine if you love me or not. The blood of Jesus, I ain't got time for that. God says, I ain't got time for that. I don't want that coming up. No, the blood. Look at what it says. I love this. Here. He says, even I, Lord have mercy, am he that blotteth out all your transgressions. He said, I do it for my own self. I ain't do it for you. No, no. I, he says, and then I will not remember thy sins anymore. God says, I ain't even thinking about it no more. See, when it's over, oh, y'all ain't praying with me. <laughs> people can't believe that. Y'all, 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 look here, look at Y'all ought to wave y'all hand to God right now. See, people can't believe that when y'all have a conversation and you say, good, we don't squash this, it's squashed. Because see, in their mind, they still not thinking you looking at them different. Is he talking about me? Ain't nobody talking about you. I don't, I don't write my lessons based on you. Thousands of people listen to me teach the gospel. Matter of fact, 23,000 last year. You just one of 23,000. You think I'm thinking about you? That's your own guilty conscience. It ain't mine. For my own sake, I'm leading God's people. I ain't got time for you. The blood of Jesus. But you'll sit there. That's your guilt. That ain't me. That ain't me. And what you should do is come and let me lay hands on you. Hey, hey, hey. No, that's your guilt. That ain't me. I ain't even thinking about you. I don't care much about you like that right there. I got too much going on. Y'all, I wish I had some help up in here. I got, I got a vision. I got a vision to finish this building and build a new one. I got a vision to start a new church in Monk's Corner. I got a vision to build my wife and I a new home estate. I'll find out. You think I'm thinking about you? Oh, my God. You need the Lord to help you. The blood of somebody shout, I plead the blood. I ain't thinking about you. Where that girl at? Get my where, where she at? She back. Get my towel. You're too far gone. I plead the blood. I'm spitting now. Yeah, that anointing coming out of me. Hurry up, run. That anointing coming out of me. Yeah, that anointing is. Woo-wee. See, you gotta, you, you, look here, you, you, you losing ground worrying about what people think. The blood of Jesus, man. The blood of Jesus. It's a bad towel. 
<laughs> I'm closing. Y'all want to go now. So I look at somebody and say, the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. So you got to get delivered. You got to get delivered. I'm talking to somebody in here. You got to get delivered. You be coming to church thinking, Pastor, talking about you. Please. You ought to be thankful. God give you a man of God a bold enough to tell you what your problem is. I ain't got time for you. I'm praying, teaching. I'm praying, studying the word of God. You think I be thinking about y'all when I, I don't be thinking about not a soul in here. I be thinking about what the Lord want me to say. Now, it just so happened, you came. Now, my sister's good at that. My sister told me, she said, look, bro. She said, oh, my God, every time I hear you preach, you be stepping on my toes. I said, baby, I don't be thinking about your feet, man. I be, I be, I be trying to hear from God. I mean, now, nah, if it if, if feel like it's on your weight on your feet, then take them shoes off. They're too tight. Quit doing that. <laughs> let's close. Let's close. Revelations 12. I'm going to close with Revelations 12, and I'm going to go all the way down 1 through 11. Revelations 12. Y'all got blessed? Y'all feel better now? Y'all feel better? Wave at me if you feel better. I remember one day, I can't talk much, but one day, son Bernard come to me. He said, you got a minute? I said, yeah, I'm at church. I said, hurry up, he said, come back to church. Hey, I just want to tell you this what I'm dealing with, this what I'm going through, and this what's going to happen. I said, okay. He said, I just want to tell you before anybody else uh, hear it or say it, but this what's going to happen. I said, okay. Well, the favor of God's going before you. I jumped in my car and left. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't call him. I ain't worried about it because I had already declared the word of God. You see what I'm saying? The next day, I saw him. What's up, dude? He said, good. He been looking at me, waiting for me to ask him about the situation. Man, please, I ain't got time for that situation. The fact that you standing in front of me mean everything is all right. So what I'm going to be talking about that for? I ain't got time for that. And don't be walking around here looking sad. Well, he, he know that about me. Please, get yourself together. Boy, don't play with me. You got to serve me. I ain't got time for all that negative spirit around me. Don't be walking around me all paranoid. Okay, I saw you drunk. Okay, good. Get it right, and let's go. One of my, one of my son's spiritual son, one of my spiritual son. Uh, he ain't know I was going to be there. He ain't know I was going to be there that night. He ain't know it. He ain't know it. He ain't know I was going to be sitting up in that club that night. He ain't know it. He a pastor, too. He a pastor. <laughs> he turned, y'all. Sabrina, Sabrina right there with me. She ain't want to be there, but I had her there that night. She didn't want to be in this spot. Mr. Wineglass, she did not want to be in that spot, but I had her there with me. I don't know why I had her there. I So help me God, I don't know why. And then I walk up, I see him. Boy, he turned. Boy, I mean, toe for up from, boy, I mean, Mr. Wineglass, he, he, look, he a little smaller than you, so he bigger than me. He told, I can't hardly hold it. And then... All of a sudden, he put his hands in that girl's face. Boy, everything, the strength of God. I had Samson's strength. I grabbed him, and I snatched him, and I said, boy, if you don't get your car. Listen, I was pulling him through the club like a child. The girl said, you saw it? I said, I ain't seen nothing. I sat, Sabrina was sitting down. I put him side, I said, oh baby, sit right, you better not move, Sabrina, don't you let him move. She looking at me like, what happened? Don't worry about it. Nobody's business. So I told another person, I said, could you get my, that's my son right there now. That's what, you talking about so-and-so, that's your spirit? So I said, my son. Hey, now, get my son out of here, and the way we gonna do it is, y'all gonna make pretend he got to go to the bathroom, and y'all gonna get him out that back door. The next day, he, he called me, he said, Pop, he said, I love you so much. I said, what you talking about? I said, what you talking about? He said, oh, man, they told me what, I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. I said, did you have a good, didn't I see you last night? Did you have a good time? I had a real good time, Pop. I said, all right, hey, look here. Don't, um, don't let yourself have too much of a good time no more, because you know good times will make you do dumb stuff. And every time he see me, well, the first time he told me when he, he dropped his head, I said, boy, you better not drop your head in front of me. It's over. We done clean that up. God, the blood clean that up. No, be who you are. See, some of y'all still walk around with your head down because you, listen, listen, you feel bad about what you're doing. If the Lord has forgiven you for it and he don't remember, why are you going to be around people that remember it? Let 
let it go. Walk on. That's what I love about BJ. He, boy, he come back on his assignment like ain't nothing happened. Okay, y'all come on around here. He, boy, look, it looked like his anointing intensified. I said, whoa. Well, you might want to do that again then if your anointing going up that quick. Don't do it no more. Are y'all getting this? See, you got, you got to, the blood. The blood protects us. In closing, let's go. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to tell y'all how the devil worked, through, how the devil been using you. Yeah, he, he used I'm tell you, it'll be all right. Watch this. Then I witnessed in heaven an event a great, of great significance. I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Wee! Look at what, I wish I had time to teach that. She was pregnant and she cried out because of her labor pains, the agony of giving birth. Woo! Then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads and ten horns with seven crowns on his head. His tail swept away one third of the stars in the sky. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. See how, the, see how, see how that dragon? Y'all get that dragon. Okay, y'all, y'all are stars. All right. You all are stars. Watch who you hang around. Because you don't want who you hang around to knock you from your post. You've been designed by God to sit high like him and look low. But some of y'all are looking low, trying to look high. Sitting low, trying to look high. The Bible says, and uh, he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby as soon as it was born. I'm talking about about Jesus. She gave birth to a son who was to rule the nations with an iron rod. Say they're talking about Jesus. And her child was to snatch away from the dragon. And her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and to his throne. Let me break that down, okay? Okay. Y y can I have seven more minutes? How many of y'all want to learn what that means? That's good. The rest of y'all, make sure you leave your tithe and offer before you go. Okay, can you go back? You got to work with me now. I need to go to the first verse, and then I'm going to tell you when to drop back down to the fifth verse. I witnessed in heaven an event. I saw a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon beneath her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Watch this. Hey, y'all. That's the children of God. The 12 tribes of Israel. Look at somebody say, that's us. We are the woman. Didn't the Bible say we are the bride? Uh, didn't the Bible say we are the bride of Christ? Now watch this here. We going to birth him and then marry him. Take my time now since y'all gave me 10 minutes. So now this woman is us. This is the church. Y'all ready? I witnessed in heaven a great significance. I saw this woman. She was clothed with the sun. See, aren't we the light of the world? She was clothed with the sun. And then watch this right here. With the moon beneath her feet. Now watch this, watch this. We're the light of the world. We got the moon beneath our feet. Anything dark, in darkness, we still shine. Doesn't the moon govern the night? And the sun govern the day? So it doesn't matter if it's day or night, light still shows. It doesn't matter how dark our lives get, we still ought to be as bright as a diamond, shining bright like, oh, no, no, that's, that, 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 that'd be awesome. She was pregnant. In other words, watch this now, watch this. The church birthed Christ. Oh. Did not Jesus say, if I be lifted up? Wait a minute, well, who gonna lift him up? We are supposed to be lifting up Jesus. Right. The church gives life to who Jesus is. Right. We birth him out of people don't know Jesus unless we show him. 
isn't the greater one on the inside of us? That's it. So when a baby is in a woman, when the baby comes out, did, don't she birth him? Right. Okay, well, if he is in us, when he comes out of us to mankind, it should be we birthing him. Same thing we birth, we marry. Y'all don't like that because y'all, you, you're narrow-minded. But I'll, I'll raise your thinking. So he says, watch this. She was pregnant. She cried out because her labor pain and agony give birth. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living what now? Boy, they're where the agony is agony. You present your body as living sacrifice, holy, and set on God with your reasonable service. So the Bible says now, look at the scripture says, it says a labor pains. In other words, it's a sacrifice to, 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 to let people see the Christ in us. Okay. All right. Ro Romans 1 16 talking about I'm not ashamed of the gospel because many of y'all are ashamed. Y'all right. right. won't talk about God in front of people. Right. You're real godly here. You got all kind of word here. All right. All right. We don't need it in here. They need it out there. Third verse, T take your time, Pastor. Then I witnessed in heaven in a significant event where a large red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. Watch this right here. Fourth verse, his tail swept away and took a third of the stars in the sky. Got it? He stood in front of the woman. He stands in front of the church who's about to birth Christ. Ready to, to ready, watch this now, and he's ready to devour her baby. Do you not know that the devil is ready to devour the Jesus we are about to display? That's right. See, your, your man of God don't be under an attack because I did something wrong. Nope. That's right. No, devil don't like me putting letting people letting y'all know who he is. Because see, once you get to know how he operates, you got it. Amen. So watch this right here. Watch this right here. So he ready to devour her baby as soon as this was born. She gave birth to the son who was to rule the nations with iron and rod and her child uh, and her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and to his throne. That's talking about Jesus, y'all. Yeah, boy, I wish I had time today. I could preach the Bible to y'all. Next verse, next verse, next verse. And the woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her 1,260 days. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I wish I had some help up in here. Okay, can we just divide that into 365? Can we just divide 1260 into 365? I'll get it to you in a minute. I'll get it to you in a minute. I'm just going to teach y'all a little bit of the Bible because this will help some of y'all. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to help the people's but now I'm going to help the people's Ms. Wineglass. I'm going to get them free. Okay, how much is that now? Three, that's three years, three, almost three and a half years. How you want to walk in your calling when you have a little inkling? You want the Lord to use you, and you ain't been no way for three day, three years. See, the church got it all wrong. They so busy, want a, want a title, messing people's life up. You have not sat. The Apostle Paul said, I went in the Arabian desert for three years, God helping me. That's right. But we're so busy wanting to lead people, and we hadn't sat ourselves down to let God lead us. Amen. Slow your road, pump your brakes. Somebody trick you to think you can get out there and preach to people. You don't have no anointing on you to break no power of the devil off of people. All you got is encouragement. Amen. And encouragement don't get people delivered. Encouragement is a band-aid on somebody's emotions and feelings. I'm talking about set out deliverance. I'm talking about they don't have to come back no more because they're free. Amen. Church ought to sit still and let somebody teach them. Look at what it says. So they was there 12, 60 days. Come on, let's go. Seventh verse. Then there was a war in heaven. Oh, Michael and his angels fought against that dragon. Still talking about that dragon, y'all. Right. Okay. And his angels. Let's go. And the dragon lost the battle. And he, 
and his angels were forced out of heaven. Who right. ain't that something? Now watch this. Here. Who fought the battle? You got an angelic army fighting on our behalf right now. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this, watch this, watch this here. Come on. When the dragon lost the battle, forced out of heaven, he kicked out. Now watch this. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil or Satan, one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with his angel. 10th verse. Then I heard a loud voice across the heaven. It has come at last salvation and the power of the kingdom of God and the authority of the Christ for the accuser of the brothers. Now it's amazing. It's amazing. There's five names of Lucifer. Oh, y'all remember Lucifer, right? He was the son of the morning. Lucifer was the praise and worship leader for God. Oh, let me help y'all in there. Why y'all be thinking oh, the more, most foolishness be around up in this area? Yeah. That's why the pastor have to keep himself covered. The blood. The blood over my praise and worship. The blood over my band. Y'all laughing if you want to, but I'm serious. Yeah. The blood over every pastor, every minister, every so-called man, the blood of Jesus over their mind. Because, see, that's where it starts at. Y'all didn't know that? that? Listen to me. It ain't you, BJ. No. It starts at that singing and that music and then that priest. You didn't know that? Woo-wee. Witches and warlocks. Plants. They coming at the priest. That's why the priest got to know the word. Amen. You got to know that word. That's, That's the power. That's mm-hmm. Power's in the word. That's so number one, we see five names of Lucifer. The old dragon. The serpent. The devil. Satan. And the accuser of the brother. Y'all got them five? Okay, they all have roles, different roles. I'm going to give you the roles and then we're going home. You ready? Role number one, the great dragon, he is the ultimate source of evil. He sits back and he sends signals to the serpent, Satan, devil, and the accuser of the brothers. Yeah, that's what he does. See, that's why the Bible says, woe unto the earth. (laughs) For, For he was kicked down to the earth. Heaven, God cleaned heaven, got them out. Now they're here. Now he get, but he gave us power to deal with it. Where's the power? In the blood. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. The ultimate source, that dragon is the ultimate source of evil. There are three types of evil that runs through the heart and minds of a man. Number one, pride. Pride is an evil. Yeah. Number two is wickedness. It's this wickedness is the same thing. Wickedness deals with a man's head. Have you ever had somebody, you call them lie, but they didn't lie, they really twisted the truth. They wicked. You, you know what a candle? A candle has a what? And the reason why it's a wick, because it's twisted. They'll twist the truth. So, I wish I had some help up in it. So that great dragon will send to some people an assignment to twist the truth. They wicked. You got wicked hearted people. Wicked minded people. But you got evil hearted people. So you got pride, wickedness, and evil. Evil is when they premeditate. No, I ain't talking about ungodly people because they do what they do. Sinners do what they do. God deals with pride, wickedness, and evil with his people. So when you see a person twisting things too messy, they can't never go in anything and everything come out right. They make a mess of it in their presence. That means the spirit of wickedness rests on them. Shoot. How we was supposed to have been putting the wedding together? And y'all done fell out. Somebody in that camp wicked. I wish I had some help up in here. Ain't no way in the world. I wish I had some help up. Ain't no way in the world. I was talking talking to somebody. I don't know if it was you or who I was talking to. I was talking to someone the other day. 
uh, yesterday. I said, we don't compete. We make everything complete. I have a great team. My staff that's around me, there is no competition in them. What I watch them do, everybody respects each other. We don't try to twist it up. Nobody gets upset because so-and-so do this. Now, when you find people getting upset because so-and-so doing something, they trying to twist. All right. So we got that dragon. The dragon is the ultimate source of evil. Then the Bible says, the ancient serpent. The, <laughs> the ancient serpent, his goal is to deceive you. In other words, the Bible says the serpent was more cunning. In other words, y'all ready? Y'all ready? The, the, the serpent is good at planning, at, at planning how to get you um, to do what they want you to do through deception. I tell you the devil be using y'all. See, when folk want to take what you don't want nobody to know and use it to control you, they plan that. They plan to kind of get you to make a mistake so they can have something on you. You better hear me, BJ. That, that serpent, boy. I'm telling you. <laughs> and this, y'all, oh, this ain't, this, now let me make this clear, Mr. Wineglass. We ain't talking about the world. No. Sinners does what sinners does. That's right. I'm talking about God's people. I'm looking around and I'm saying, now what? You know, deception is misinformed information. They'll tell you half the truth. That's right. All right, let's work it out. Okay, since y'all act like y'all don't know, I just get straight on down the road with you. Well, if you someplace you don't want nobody to know, where you at over here? Like we know where over here is. <laughs> see now y'all getting it. Look at that. I see. I said, oh, I can't park back there. I can't park. I can't park my fingers. I'm about to park just now. See the spirit on me now. So I got to put my hands behind my back there. You you understand what I'm saying? Deception. They deceiving you, and they say it like they telling you everything. Deception is they are planning. When people, the devil, the serpent used people to ask you questions, not for information, but for interrogation. All right. All right. That's why you have to plead the blood, because they're trying to get you to incriminate yourself. I got dog and I'm preaching bad and saying amen. So everybody ain't asking for information. They're asking for interrogation. That's why you have to, just like you plead the fifth, when people ask you a question, you say, I plead the fifth, because they already know that you're trying to get them to incriminate themselves, not for the present, but for the future. Right. And they'll come back and say, last week when we was talking, you said. All right. All right. The serpent. Boy, Bishop is preaching tonight. Boy, the devil, I got him on his, come on, y'all, I got him on the run right now. I got him, look at, look at somebody say, come on, wave your hand, say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Now, how many want to get delivered? Say the blood of Jesus. Man, he was using me. See, they ain't want to say that. They ain't want to see that. See that? See, you heard that right? You heard how that tone, blood of Jesus, they high. Man, he was using me. They ain't want to say that. Because see, right now, he still got a stronghold on him. But he was using him. Well, he still got a stronghold on him. Man, the devil was using him. Yeah, sirree. Yeah. <laughs> I got to look this way. I can't look at the people. That thing's showing up so tough. Okay. So we got the great dragon, the ultimate source of evil. The serpent, he's the deception. He's good at planning how to get what he wants you want to get out of you through deceit. He want to deceive. He, he, he knows what he wants. He play up on you. Lord, then we got the devil. Come on, let's get off this thing. I ain't getting off of it. I'm gonna... So we got the great dragon. We got the serpent. Then we got the devil. The devil, watch this now. Here's the devil. Now the serpent deceived, but the devil embodies evil. No, no. <laughs> That's the heart of a man. Born again believer, but he's just jealous. You can't trust him to control nothing. 
You can't even ask them to paint the wall because they will spill all the paint on the floor. They jealous. Don't let them drive your car because they will scratch it for the sake of it. All right. Because they jealous. I wish I had some help up in here. You can't let them handle things that's dear to you because they jealous. Their heart's evil. That's the devil. They embodying the spirit of evilness. Not that the devil possessed them, but they don't mind letting it be in them. What do you think jealousy is? That's the devil. <laughs> I somebody said, that's the devil. So if you're a jealous person, come on, somebody say, the blood of Jesus I plead over me. Letting him use me. That's the devil. That's the devil. That's the devil. We've seen the devil. I done, see, I, I done been through all this right here. That's how I know what they are. Remember, we were talking about that not too long ago. Remember, we had this conference, financial increase conference, and and and, and them, not, it wasn't none of y'all because our church was in Mount Pleasant at the time. Remember? You know where I'm going because we talked about it. We get, we are day, watch this here. We are a day away from Apostle Hilliard, Dr. Hilliard coming in, people coming from around the country to come and fellowship with us in Mount Pleasant at our, on Joe Rouse Road, 29-something Joe Rouse Road, that address. Up. You understand what I'm saying? And the devil embodied the praise and worship leader and the people. Now you remember. You remember? Because yeah, yeah. they was mad they couldn't be in certain positions. So the night of rehearsal, they quit. That's what they did, Jonathan. They quit. But because I knew it was the devil, I went and anointed some people. Yeah. Come on. You sing. You sing. Yeah. You sing. And you sing. And they looked at me and said, what? I said, come, come, not right now. And we got in the church, Jonathan, and I went old school on. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. I, boy, I started singing. Yeah. And they sitting there, yes, yeah, send it on down, Lord. Send, and they saying, we sing it. No, no, we're going to sing it right now. They didn't know I was summoning the Holy Ghost to deputize them to sing the next day. The power of God hit that rehearsal that night. They was laying on the floor. They woke up the next day ready to go ahead and sing praise and worship. The devil was in them people's hearts. evil because they were jealous you know when you're jealous you won't come on time all right all right like over here no you you are you know good and well Monet you supposed to be serving the people tell you to be there at 645 God hear you I supposed to be in church at 645 they they church gonna be there when I get there that's the devil I told you he was using y'all yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I told you he was using y'all. They'll be all right. That's the devil. All right. That's the devil. The devil is the source of temptation. I got him at his game right now. I'm going back on the stage because I feel too much down there. Let's go. That's the devil. It's the source of temptation. You understand what I'm saying? At least you ain't got to worry about getting there at no 645. They don't have the sound ready anyway. That's what, that what she's telling you. She tempt, the devil is the source of temptation. The devil talking in her ear now. Angela ain't going to be ready. I, matter of fact, Jonathan always late anyhow. So you ain't got to worry about why you trying to be there on time. Ain't nobody there. Oh, I wish I had some help. Shoot. Y'all, give me some keys or something, man. Because everybody else going to sleep on me right now. And I, I still got me three more minutes. That's the devil. That's the devil tempting you to go contrary to what the order is. That's the devil. They told you your payment was due on the first. I don't worry about it. You can pay them people as long as you get it in before the month. The devil is tempting you. Now, the devil ain't going to help you on your credit. The devil, I told you he was using y'all. 
Oh, y'all act like he and you. When I said that up front, y'all act a fool on me. But I'm coming for y'all tonight because I'm going to get the devil out of y'all. That's the devil. That's the devil. That's right. You ain't always got to be in church. You ain't got no peace in your home. All right. All hell done broke loose. And you letting the devil tell you, oh, don't worry about it. They'll get over it. Oh. 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 That's the devil. <laughs> Ooh, let's get off the devil then. I ain't. Because he's the source of temptation. Wee. Yeah. The devil. Amen. Source of temptation. Tempting you to go against. Wasn't the devil. You can't do that. That's why you got to watch who you hang around. Because they may have the devil in the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody plead the blood. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus. See, he was using me. He was using me. He was using me. See, see, you got to, oh, no, he was. So you got to get it right, man. He was. He was, yeah, he was using us. Because we didn't know his MO. We thought we was right, man. We thought we was helping people, man. And we led people wrong. And then when people needed us, we didn't have the strength of character to stand with us, with them. That's the devil. He was using us. You telling me? The devil. It's the devil. And men and women of God talking about they called in the ministry. And they, they come up with all these so-called prayer groups and support groups until what the people in the group go through something. They can't handle. Then they walk away from it. That's the devil. Tricking you like that. That ain't right. You ain't called on deal with it. Everybody want to be used by God. But ain't nobody, everybody ain't called. Sit still. Sit still. The devil. Why Tierra praying? What you mean? Why is Tierra praying? Oh, she don't supposed to pray? Oh, that's the devil. She too young. Really? I had that same testimony. You remember that too, didn't you? They said I was too young to be their pastor, but they were sending me prayer requests. So since I can't pastor, ain't no need me trying to pray for you. Amen. That's the devil. Amen. Yeah, I'm too young. That's what he told me, Mr. Wine. You too, he too young to be my pastor. It's okay. Yeah. Well, why are you sending me a prayer request? Amen. No, you ain't going to use me. I know my value. That's the devil. <laughs> Glory to God. She's the one who's driving 10 hours within a 24-hour period to go sit among prayer warriors and receive an anointing. She's the one that'll get in her car and sacrifice and make and spend money she don't have to go sit at the feet of anointed intercessors and let them speak over her and let them pray for her and let them put their hands on her so she can come back to this house and pray for God's people. And you asking me why she praying? You are the devil working through it. Let you letting them work through you. That's why she praying. And she keep on praying. And keep on praying. You go and read two scriptures in the Bible and talk about God called you to intercede. No, baby. No, you don't understand what intercession is. Intercession is going down into hell and snatching God's people out of hell. I ain't want no play play intercessor. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. I want somebody interceding for me that when I can't get out of the muck in the mire, they don't have a problem taking off their worldly clothes and going down and saying, you got one of mine down here. You got one of God's people down here. You got my colleague down here. And he or she must come out today. That's what I want. I don't want to play, play prayer warrior. Yeah. I watch the fire in the eye. Oh, I watch the Sunday. Man, I watched her Sunday. She stood on her post all day. Y'all, she ain't never sat down. She came ready. 
You said you wanted to cast demons out. I'm ready. She had just come back from Atlanta. She drove all night just to be in 6 a.m. prayer in Atlanta and turned around and came back. Because I'm ready, Bishop. Let's do this right here. Let's cast some demons out. I watched people couldn't even walk up on her. The anointing of God was so strong on her. When she was walking up to them, they was backing up. I'm saying, yes, look at the power of God. I ain't the only one. See, some people like how you pray. I don't, I don't worry about how you pray. I like prayers that gets results. The dragon, the serpent, the devil. Let's talk about the devil. The devil not only is the source of temptation, but the devil is the one that rebels against God. The devil is the one that tries to undermine God's purpose. That's what I'm talking about. You know, undermine. Yeah. The devil. Working in the hearts of people. Yeah. It's amazing. Anybody ever worked in corporate America? Come on, wave at me, work in corporate America. High level leadership. Come on, little baby. Little boy said he worked in corporate America. Boy, ain't his guy. So, Bernard, you own a company. Hmm? Or two. And, Bernard, you go and get Jeremiah and put Jeremiah in leadership. You with me on that, right? Now, Chase get offended. So he try to undermine Jeremiah. Not because he don't like Jeremiah. It's really because he's mad at you. See, when folk attack people I put in leadership, they're not attacking the people. They are attacking me. Because they don't like what I did, and I know that's the devil. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. I saw the devil face to face in God's people, working through people. I remember when I announced one Sunday morning that Brandy was coming full time in the ministry, I watched a member grabbed their stuff, got up and walked out the church and never been back. Yeah. Yeah. I watch it. I listen to people talk about people that Bishop has put in position because they upset with the Bishop and they don't know they touching the wrong thing. I have a blood barrier. And what happens is, if they don't let pride go, they'll leave, and down the road, you hear stuff you don't want to hear. Pride will tell them, hey, I was wrong, my heart was wrong. By now, you ought to know I know what I'm doing. But uh, Vashonda used to run a plant, right? Used to have a lot of people, right? She used to hate to fire people. She'd be crying and stuff about fine people. Why, why, why are you crying? Fire them. They're not doing the job. Why are you crying? Well, they, they, they got a family. Who cares? It ain't you. It's them. They should be taking care of their family, not you. If they do their job, you wouldn't have to let them go. The devil. <laughs> Ooh, let's talk about the devil. I ain't finished. Because I'm working. He... he, he he almost at the back door. He almost, you see, when you start seeing the door swing and you start hearing noises, he gone. Yeah, I'm just telling y'all the devil. I'm watching. See, you got to understand, he'll use you. That's the agony of birth in Christ. That's the agony of birth in Christ. That is the agony of birth in Christ. Yeah. See, if you don't watch it, you'll get offended. Uh, 
<laughs> I love Jesus, y'all. You'll get offended because what you were supposed to be doing, that fella back there doing it. And God ain't going to, how you say, Timothy, everybody got a window, ain't it? We all got us a window, you know. And so you sitting there thinking you got time and your window closing. Now, God done brought somebody else in here. And somebody else saying, hey, Bishop, what you got? I'm ready. You sitting around like you got time. <laughs> I, now I've been telling people this for years. Right. Don't ever say, Pastor, if you need me, call you, because I will never call you. Because what I need is God. And God will touch your heart and tell you this is what Pastor needs. If you're there. But you'll let the devil get in your heart and you'll think it's wrong. Amen. Amen. That's what I love about Sister Ella. Sister Ella, she's the second oldest member in the church, longest member in the church, Margaret the first. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> she's speaking. <laughs> Sister Ella has been on my board, though. She's been on my, our board for almost... 29 years and there has never been a change I made that she didn't square me up in my eyes and say come in man of God I said what's up sister Ella I'm with you she has never bucked the change she said I may not know what you're doing but I have watched God do some great things through you and ain't no need of me doubting you now so let's go on what you want us to do now and she always closed out. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. I'm going to keep on leaning on him. Let's go, Pastor. That's what I love about Vashonda. She don't have a clue sometimes. She's sitting there saying, what in the world is this man about to do? Lord, help this man right here. And then when I say it, she wakes up and says, okay, if that's what you want, let's go. She's never argued it. Never bucked it. See, she's known, learned how to saturate her heart in the word. And even if I error, we still with you, Pastor. You, you shouldn't have done that anyway. But let's go on. God will take care of it. Because she knows I don't do it intentionally. See, we can make mistakes unintentionally. But you got to have people around you that cannot be easy prey to the devil. Can I, can I help you all right now? Say, help me, Pastor. Don't give... Don't give high-level, secure information to people who don't have a relationship with God, number one. And quit loving things and people that don't love God. You can't love what don't love God. So we got that dragon, we got that serpent, we got that devil, then we got Satan. Now, Satan is the leader of demonic forces. Okay. Yo, let me tell you. Let me tell, let me tell, let me tell you how Satan works. This is how Satan works. You ready? Satan tell a deer pull out in front of you. A deer don't know. Y'all know the deers and stuff like that? A deer don't know. A squirrel don't know. Like a squirrel run out, the squirrel in our neighborhood, they run out, and I be watching my neighbor slam on brake. Y'all better kill that squirrel. Boom. <laughs> Look back in the rearview mirror. He just stretch out. He stretch out. He stretch out. <laughs> and he looked just like the asphalt. No, you don't do that. See, he, <laughs> these animals don't have the, <laughs> they don't have a sense of understanding. They are driven. How do you know, Pastor? Did not the spirit go in them hogs and they went and drowned themselves? See, God gives us a reference in the Bible. Satan, he asked that man, who are you, them, them demons? Boy, they said them demons, these demonic forces. We are legion, it's many of us. Now, don't the, bid, us to, bid us to go into the swine. They left the man and went in the hog, and them hogs ain't no, no better drowning. They know that no hog can swim. <laughs> so when you see that, we was in the mountains. Y'all remember we was in the mountains that time? Remember, we was, in, we was in the mountains or something. Who was in the mountains? And they, was, they told us about the squirrels going to turn the doorknob and come in and all that stuff. They come up here today, I'm killing them all. Bow, bow, shoot up in here. So we coming down the mountain. We coming down the mountain. Look, you know you, if you've ever been in, driven in the mountains, look, squirrels just run out. Don't hit him. Well, if I go to the left, I'm going off. Right. 
If I go to the right, I'm hitting the mountain. Because that's the Satan. That's Satan using that animal. Hello, y'all laughing, but I'm trying to tell y'all. So that's why when you, you shouldn't let fear grip you when you see animals side the road like that. Tell them, talk to them. Don't do it. Don't listen to Satan. The blood of Jesus, don't you listen to Satan. Do not listen to him. Because if you listen to him, I'm telling you, you, you the one going to get hurt. I got insurance. I am not going to move out the way to try to keep from hitting you. I'm going to tear your behind up. Bambi, all your parents and all your cousins going to see you side the road. They're going to have a fear. <laughs> Hello? Satan, y'all listen. Satan is the leader of demonic forces. Watch this here. Satan is the one that introduces you to sin. That's what Satan does. Go on, tell him a lie. Tell him it was heavy traffic. That's why you're late for work. I told you he was using y'all. I told you. I can't talk to them because I would talk to the people around the globe. I told you he was using y'all. And then you try to make the lie white. Or you try to make the lie little. A little white. That's, Satan introduces us to sin. Oh, y'all ain't. <laughs> Satan introduces us. I was with them fellas the other day, y'all. We was out of town. About 12 of us. Watch Jeremiah start laughing, but he he's still laughing about that thing. And the boy, I'm telling you, that girl sitting there, that girl right there behind BJ, hey, hey, Dre, she done been in, been over on BJ's shoulder. He ain't feel nothing. The devil, the devil couldn't use him. He ain't know nothing was going on. She done <laughs> Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah laughing. Jeremiah sitting there laughing at all, laughing at BJ. Jeremiah looking at me, looking at BJ. She done been all over. She all up there, and BJ ain't know nothing. The devil ain't got him. Satan ain't doing nothing for BJ. BJ free. So when I, since the devil know he couldn't try BJ, he didn't, couldn't get Jeremiah, Jeremiah said that tripping like, Bitch, what you gonna do? I ain't doing nothing. I'm just, the devil is a liar, that's what. Then she turned around and looked at me. I said, what? I'm good. She turned around and looked back again. He, then he laughing again, right? He laughing at me like, he ain't no intercessor, you know. He ain't binding or loosing. He ain't, but him and Dre, they ain't no intercessor. Dre, Dre sitting there trying to play security, but he like, I'm going to see what you're going to do. Dow sitting there and say, Dow sitting there and say, uh, 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 uh. I said, hey, I'm good, girl. I said, I'm good, boo. She turned around again. I said, baby, I'm good. I'm good. She said, I just want to hear your voice. I said, well, come on down here. Dow, you move down. Daryl, you move down. Daryl like that. He okay. Let's see what the bishop gonna do. How he gonna handle this? Here? He gonna teach the men what to do. Terrell was late getting there. He he said, "I'd handle it for you, bishop. I'd handle it for you." But I I'm so glad he wasn't there. He was late. So I sat and talked to her. You understand? What I'm saying just kind because of, I would dare do anything to disrespect the young lady. Cause she because she she wasn't looking at me. She saw that oil on me, man. She saw me sitting at the head of the table ministering to them guys. And she said it. She said something about your voice, man. You know, you get, you get me. And she said, I know you're somebody. You know, I done talked to her on the phone and everything. She said, I know you're somebody. We, we discussed that. But I already know. Now, now, if I had not had some strength, the devil could have suggested, well, that's you right there. Oh, oh, she had, every, she had all the check marks. Nails done. Pretty. Hair done. Feet done. Clothes put together on her. She's pretty. She, I mean, it ain't like. Oh, Lord, Lord, look at how y'all looking at me. Y'all a bunch, y'all slow. Oh, no, she, okay, baby. She, everything was like, but I was so grounded that nah. Well, I'm good. I said, okay, thank you. Appreciate that, girl. Yeah, you're a nice looking girl yourself. You know what I'm saying? We were talking, you know what I'm saying? Then we done with that. You follow me? And then, all the rest of them, they, they try to be real spiritual and deep. Bishop, show us how to handle it when we out here and stuff like that. I say, yeah, really. 
If I wasn't here, I could have seen BJ. If, if I wasn't there, Drake, hey, if I wasn't there, Jeremiah, BJ would have felt that thing on his back. He'd have felt that thing. <laughs> he t- I was there. He, hey, look here. I was there. He would twist. <laughs> Satan. Let's go. And then you got the accuser of the brothers. I'm going home, y'all. Y'all, y'all get your offering together. Hey, listen. Uh, I got 15 more envelopes. If you have not had a chance to sow a weaponized seed to come against, uh, come against the works of darkness, and you would like to do so, you raise your hand, and I'll get you those. Uh, I'll get you those envelopes. They're in my black drawer in my office. There's 15 of them, but I need BJ to go get them. He's the only one can touch them because I prayed over them. So let's go to the scripture. Let's look at how we win, Mr. Wineglass. Yes, so we got the dragon, mm-hmm. we got the serpent, we got the devil, mm-hmm. we got Satan, and we have the accuser of the brothers. That's it. How do we win? Take me to the ninth verse. That great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil, or Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Tenth verse. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heaven. It has come to the last salvation of power of the kingdom of God the authority of the Christ, for the accuser of the brothers and sisters have been thrown down to the earth, the one who accuses them before God day and night. Here it is right there. But they defeated them all. Look at somebody say, we win them, we defeat them all. How do we defeat them all? They defeated them all by the what now? Blood of the lamb and by their See, I share the testimony because I won't give the devil the right to try to hold that in my heart. That's it. Yeah, see, y'all thought I was just talking. Not only do I apply the blood, but I tell my testimony of how I was able to be victorious. Catch me 30-something years ago, <laughs> she'd have been one of the goldfish in the tank. Y'all say what you want to say. <laughs> Y'all can act all bougie if you want to. I ain't been always this strong. Just like some of you have not have been always as strong as you are today. You still got some ways to go. But now you understand you have the blood of Jesus that you apply to plead. See, that's why I don't go. I'm not afraid to be by myself, but I know my value. I know my value. I know my value. That I understand when I walk in how people handle me. I know my value that I'm a kind person. I'm a nice person. I'm rich and good looking. I know they looking at all of that, but they don't know me like who I really am. So it's not that I can't be by myself. I just know my value. I know that I'm not going to put myself. I know God, the blood gives me wisdom from the cunningness and the craftiness of the devil. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm smart enough to know that. Try to tell some of you sisters. You're successful. You got it going on. You ain't got time to be sitting with everybody. You too valuable, girl. You're smart. You're intelligent. You're sharp. That's what I can't wait for the women conference. Because that's what the glory is all about. Girl, quit playing games. No, don't put yourself out like that. Amen. Y'all don't like to say it. Because the devil, he don't play fair. Bible says they overcame by the blood of the lamb. See, y'all can overcome all five of them. But you got to plead the blood. And tell your testimony. See, my testimony let me know how far I have come. Lord, I wish I had some help up in here. Yes, sir. Felt like cussing them out, but I didn't even cuss them out. I'm telling my testimony. I tell the truth. I'm transparent because I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. We, yeah, the blood. See, don't get, listen to me, people of God. Don't get yourself out of place like you all at. There's five forces of wickedness comes at you. Five. The 
devil, you don't know which way he's going to try. But the blood will take care of all of it. Come get the envelope if you, that's you. This is a, a, a weaponized seed against the works of darkness. This is a weaponized seed. And that's what you put on there. A weaponized seed. According to Malachi 3. God's coming against sorcery. That's witchcraft. We send fire to evil altars. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No, we send, no, you okay. We send fire to evil altars. We curse everything that's not like God. No, we are no longer going to lose ground because the devil have been pushing us back. We getting ready to take territory. We anointed. We, we getting ready to cover some ground. God told me that he was redeeming the time. You may feel like you behind, but I'm telling you, I'm going to take this hundred dollars and I'm going to weaponize. Take me over to Malachi at three and three and five somewhere up in there. Yeah. I'm working this one. I ain't playing with it. You can sit here and act like you got it, but I'm telling you, he has used all of us and we didn't know because we didn't know what he do, how he does it. Now we know his game. Don't try to, and it ain't nothing for you to feel bad about. You did it. And some of you got so comfortable till you thought it was the norm. It's not the norm. It's not the norm. It is not the norm. See, you can be in something so long, you don't know it's right, wrong, until somebody tell you, but we beat him at his game. Man, let me tell you something. Anybody that's planned on being something, anybody that's planned on going somewhere in life, I promise you, you better wake up and smell the coffee. Because I'm telling you, remember the devil is after the church. He's after angels. He's after Jesus. He's after God's people. He's after the world. He's coming after all five groups. We see it every day. We just don't pay close attention to it. But I'm telling you, ain't playing fair. The last thing we want to say is we allow the devil to hold us back. The blood. Stand to your feet. I'm out now. Here's what we're going to do. Ooh, yeah. Come, come. I know her name. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know her name. Uh, uh, come on, Tierra. Come, Tierra. Come, uh, where's your wife? Come, Stephanie. Stand right there. Come, Carolee. Yeah. Yeah, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, holy God. Ooh-wee. This is good to me. Thank you, Father. Where's that lady? I don't know her name. That lady. Ma'am, don't be offended. Come, come. You, you. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yes, that's right. That, you got on great. Good. Come on. Just stand inside that lady in the arm. Don't worry about it. You good. She can already do something. That's what we're going to do. I told you that every bit, every, when God's, about to bring about protection and deliverance, he give you instructions. I'm going to give you all some instructions tonight. Okay? Uh, 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 um, DJ, hand, hand, me, hand me that basket and that container of uh, yeah. Put it on the altar there. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, this is what I want you to do. I just want you to take one per family. Uh, c come, Miss Mary. I, I want you to take one per family. Take one vial of oil and one, just stand inside them ladies, and one communion cup. 
This I'm going to have these ladies pass them out to you. Don't panic. The Lord told me to do this. One per family. So you're going to take and before Sunday, like I'm going to use Mr. Wineglass. Mr. Wineglass. Okay. So if you give Mr. Wineglass one vial of oil and one communion weight, one cup. Got it? Give that to Mr. Wineglass. Mr. Wineglass, the Lord told me to tell the people, you're ahead of your household. You're going to go home and between now and Sunday, you're going to anoint the top of your door and both sides. Listen to me. Front and back and side. And you're going to anoint the windows, the top of your windows and the side. And when you get through anointing, pleading the blood over your home and your family, your lives, you take that communion weight and you have communion with God. Mrs. Wineglass don't have to worry about nothing. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not telling you that she gets involved. You're the head of your household. You do it yourself. I've been doing this for over 30 years. Ask Sabrina how many times I invited her. Never, because I'm the head of my household. You understand what I'm saying? I don't need her agreement. I got enough faith in God. I have to take care of my family. You understand what I'm saying? So your whole entire family your house now, even though your kids don't live with you, your whole household is covered under the blood of Jesus. You understand my instructions. And so, likewise with Al Wynn. Now, I would suggest you don't have to. I would suggest you send Miss Wineglass to the church to work, and you go to work at home. Al, I would suggest you say, Mona, you don't want to go to the store. I wait good when Sabrina's not there. I have, I ran out, but I keep them in my refrigerator. All right. And what I do is when she's gone and nobody's there, I cover my household. But I can stand in the house I live in and cover my children's home because they are part of my family. Right. I don't care how far they are. The blood never loses its power. I don't care what, what they are doing. The blood never loses its power. So this is what I want to see you all do. I think I gave clear instruction. You have to ask them, are they the head of household? Got it? So that means that, Stephanie, you can't do it. Jonathan has to. Like Regina can't do it. Ed has to. But Sandra can do it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now let me explain what this, what God told me. God showed me that many times in the days of old, the preacher used to go to people's house and bless their homes. I want to tell y'all, I'm going to bless your home through you. You do the work. I do the praying. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if your husband or your wife is not here, if your husband or your wife is not saved or spiritual, you have to do it yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But for the most part, you handle your business. Now, this is what I want y'all to do. If you're the head of household, y'all just grab y'all some wafers. If you're the head of household, I want you to come now and I want you, it reaches the highest mountain. I want you to come this way and these ladies are going to bless you, serve you. Listen to me closely. Between now and Sunday, cover your family. I promise you, by the spirit of the living God, The things that has been plaguing your family 
It may not be you. You're going to watch it not plague them no more. I was looking at a TV show the other day. Man, I'm thinking, man, how does the blood work, God? And they were after this man. I like all these war and they was after this innocent guy. And they had trumped charges against an innocent man and he was on the run. And man, I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, this is so wrong. And I'm in the movie, you understand? And then he was on a cliff where the only place he could go was down in the water. He slid, slid down the side of the cliff and then when he got down, he started putting mud on him. Lord help me, Jesus. And then when he got muddy, he just started walking inside the cliff and the dog lost his scent. I prophesy the thing that was plaguing you. When you anoint your house the evil that was lurking around you going to lose your scent. The blood is going to cause another fragrance. And they're going to wonder where you are. And all the time, God got you covered. Because our lives are hidden in God through Christ Jesus. It won't plague you no more. Between nine Sundays. If you got children afar off, they cover. Because your house represents the family. It doesn't matter what they're doing or where they are, they cover. Ain't nothing bad gonna happen to them. There is no temptation that is such as common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow them to be tempted above what they're able to stand. And with the temptation, he's going to make a way of escape. They'll never be trapped. They'll never be made ashamed of. And pride won't have no rulership in their life. Because they cover. Cover your household. God told me to tell you that today. Matter of fact, he told me. Round about 345 today. I was sitting in a quiet place. I asked the people if I could use their building. I needed to hear from God and they told me yes. And while sitting, the spirit of God says, tell them to cover their home. Their home will represent their family. I don't care if you live in an apartment. That's yours. You anoint that place. But don't think about your protection. Think about your entire household protection. Watch what God does. Take your time. How many of you believe the blood still works? I've watched the death angel pass over my life so many times. I watch how God put bridges over troubled water for me because of the blood. The traps that the enemy pl had planned for me, I watch how God secured me. I'd watch how God, it would look like I stumbled, but it was God knocking me off track so I wouldn't step in that trap. See, every stumble ain't to destroy you. Some of it's just to derail what the devil trying to do. I wish I had some help up here. I'm talking to somebody today. Every time you stumble don't mean you made a mistake. God saw something you didn't see. He'll just let you stumble so your foot won't fall in that pit. Lord, help me, Jesus. Today, the blood of Jesus. I pleaded over every household that's represented in this church. Far and near, it doesn't matter where you are. Your family, the blood. I plead over your lives and over your family. I plead the blood of Jesus over your finances. I plead the blood of Jesus over your assets. Everything that God has blessed you with. 
I plead the blood of Jesus over your dignity. I plead the blood of Jesus over your integrity. I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. Your body, I plead the blood. Everything that's not like God has to leave your body now. I command your body to line up and be thou healed like how God has destined. I plead the blood. I'm in warfare now. Hey, glory. I plead the blood. I come against the spirit of forgetfulness. I'm talking to somebody. You're going through, you're going through a process in your life where it seems like you can't remember like you used to. Whoever I'm talking to, would you just wave at me, let me go ahead and I plead the blood, whoever that is. I plead the blood over your mind. I, I plead the blood over your mind. I, I plead the blood over your mind in the back in the name of Jesus. Memory be restored in Jesus' name. You be sharp as a tack in your thinking. I plead the blood over your life. I curse the spirit of anxiety. Who am I talking to? Can you lift your hand? I see it in the back, the spirit of anxiety. I plead the blood of Jesus against it. You have to be nervous or worry no more. Settle and rest in God. He's got you. I'm in warfare about right now. Hey, glory to God. I wish I had some help up in here. I come against the spirit of fear. You feel God nudging and pushing you to be better. You feel God calling you to launch out into the deep. But you fear because you can't touch the bottom. Who am I talking to in this auditorium? Just lift your hand. I plead the blood. Obey the spirit of the living God. I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus. Blood. I hear you, Holy Ghost. You be free tonight. I came here tonight for you to be free. The blood of Jesus. God's going to stop you from touching any unclean thing. That decision you toying with, you don't know to make it or not. If you don't know what to do, be still, saith the Lord. If you have not heard from me, I, the Lord thy God, say, be still. 